This week on the Honey Darling Show, we went rogue. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. I'm Trey Johnson. I'm the I'm the other host. We're both hosts. Hey, we're we're back. Um, we're here for probably our last episode for, of this year. So happy holidays and all that. So Merry Christmas and yeah. Happy New Year. We came back for our yearly Star Wars update. Yeah, we did do a Star Wars one at this time last year. I guess we we did like continue f- to keep doing them. We did like four Star Wars ones at this time last as long last as they year. Keep releasing them. We'll keep doing a podcast because we did we did episode Happy Christmas Star yeah. Wars. We did episode one, and we did three. We did episode one, we did episode two and three, we did the original trilogy, and The Force Awakens. So we did four Star Wars episodes last year. Wow. Because well, we had I'm to... I'm sorry to disappoint you guys, only one this year. Well, you know, we've talked about a lot of the other ones. we talked about a lot of a lot of the other ones in the past, but we just saw Rogue One. And guess what? Trey liked it. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was really good. A lot Yay. of people liked it. Uh, a lot of people who didn't like episode seven were liked it. But before we get in there, let's let's do a, let's do a for further reading thing. This is where this is where we talk about stuff that has to do with the movie that we saw. That you know maybe you should check out if you're interested in it, or if you haven't watched it yet, maybe you should maybe you should do this. Um, my I wanted to mention the uh, the Thrawn trilogy, which I've been reading on Marvel Unlimited uh, in comic book form. I mean they were books originally, I understand, but they're easier to read as comics. What's Marvel <laughs> Unlimited? Maybe. Uh, Marvel Unlimited is a paid streaming, well, streaming sort of service, much like Netflix, where you can get thousands of comic books. You can get pretty much anything from Marvel up to, like, up to whatever's, uh, in the, like, in the past six months. So, like, you can't get, you can't get brand new issues. You have to wait six months before they're on there. But as far as anything before that, they have most of it. There's thousands of comics on there. And ever since, uh, Disney bought Star Wars, Disney owns Marvel, so now they own Star Wars too. So all of the Star Wars comics that were written for Dark Horse now belong to Marvel. So all of the Dark Horse, all of the Dark Horse comics series are on Marvel Lim- Unlimited. So, and they are called the Star Wars Legends now because they're not canon, whatever. But, uh, <laughs> but like, uh, but like Dark Empire's on there. Like that was a really cool comic. Like that was a post Return of the Jedi. And I was just for the fun of it, I've been reading, uh, I've been reading the Timothy Zahn trilogy. I read through the first book. I read it through Heir to the Empire and I was just starting on Dark Force Rising and then Last Command is after that. So it's cool. There's like, uh, there's these little animals called, uh, I don't know how you pronounce them. Tell me if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I call them Y Salamaris because that's what it looks like. It's pronounced, or maybe it's Y Salamaris. They're these little little animals that basically are like immune to the force. So if you use the force, you can't use it around them. They create like a force field. Yeah, they say they push back the force. Is what they say. In the so bo- if you in the have book. one like as a companion. It makes a shield around you. Yeah, that's basically what Thrawn does. He gets a he gets a couple of them to carry around on his shoulder, so that he can't be. He has a he has a Jedi. He has like an older Jedi guy with him that he's trying to lure Luke out with, and um, he uses these creatures so this Jedi guy can't fuck with him. Like he can't do mind tricks or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And there's a part where Luke goes to a planet like where they where those creatures inhabit that planet. So he's pretty much. Fucked. He has no Jedi powers. I mean, he can oh, still use his really lightsaber. He can still use his lightsaber. His lightsaber works, but he doesn't have any of his well, sure. any force jump or push or anything like stuff like that type of thing. So it's pretty cool. And you meet Mara Jade in that in that story, who like became a huge character. Uh, spoilers for the book: her and Luke got married and had kids and all that. So she's like super cool character that everybody likes, and we're kind of mad that. She wouldn't be in the new movies. <laughs> I know a lot of the people that are into the books are really pissed that they that they all got kind of. But those books are not canon anymore. They're not canon anymore. Now they're considered legends. But uh, but Thrawn is on Star Wars Rebels now, so that's cool that they did. He did make his way into the 
canon. So he is part of canon now. Cool. As of what happens to him before uh, the original trilogy, I don't know. But it's, it's still cool to see him on there. What's really cool about Thrawn, which you, you saw the Rebel stuff with me, he's like an emphasis on art and all that. Like he studies the art of the cultures that he's uh, attacking or sure. whatever because he says that you can understand – he does, you know, he does stuff like, well, you see how this painting is about this ritual that they do on this time, so we know that they're doing this ritual at this time. Like, he understands that he studies the culture, so he knows the way they'll act or, like, what they'll be doing at a certain time. Their values, their morals, yeah. things like that. Yeah, so he's like a – he's an interesting villain as that, you know. So he's a cool character. There's a there's an evil Jedi character. I don't remember his name. Well, I don't know if he's necessarily evil or not. They haven't really said. But, like I said, he's a he's there to tempt Luke to come to him, and Thrawn's trying to get Luke and stuff like that. But, um, you know, and, and like, Leia's – developing force powers and they do all the stuff that you expected that they would have done with episode so cool. seven but I'll it's, have to read them. it's a cool story oh i mean i just you have to set it up on your phone and you can just read it off yeah, my it off my, my account phone, but we never put it on my new phone oh okay but yeah that's my that's my offering for the week i think it's i think it's really cool and for me who was really disappointed by episode seven i liked reading that book better because i think it's written much better and i think it's a better story <laughs> than than that it gave you some hope. Even though it would have, uh, even though it, it can't really be done, be done now, I guess, because it takes place so closely to Return of the Jedi and everybody's too old now. I still think it's, I still think it's a better story. So far, I haven't read all of it. And I know there's, there's always weird things to the expanded universe books, but I've, I've been digging that. I've been enjoyed what I've heard of it, or what I've read of it. And I only read the first book, so. I have more to read, but yeah, you should definitely check it out if you have Marvel Un- or if you have Marvel Unlimited. Uh, you could buy it digitally through through the Marvel app, also on your phone, whatever. You know, I think all I th- actually I think a lot of the Marvel stuff is on sale now, or all the Star Wars stuff is on sale due to the movie because I always do that every time a new mo- new movie comes out. They make their comics like half off or whatever for collections, nice. so so you should be able well, to. And you're you could- already getting a discount because they're digital, right? Uh, they charge. I mean, they charge you the same price for digital, oh, do they? which which is a boner. Which is why I like had a hard time going straight to digital because if you buy you pay the same price and you get a physical copy and, and a digital, digital copy. copy and if you pay buy the digital copy you only get the digital copy for the same price so yeah. it's like you're getting kind of it should be a buck cheaper it should be cheaper but it isn't and in, in the marvel world, it isn't but i think i think in dc their their uh, digital stuff's a little bit cheaper but they also don't offer they don't offer the free digital with the comic right so and i don't think marvel's going to do that forever yeah the the free digital with the comic? I don't think so. I mean, they've been doing it like well, since you can buy a record now and get a digital copy of the album. Yeah, I uh the Jeremy and I we talked about I don't know if we recorded on the other podcast, but we were talking about like how it would be how video games should do that too. But they need to for that they need to find a way. They need some cloud storage. Well, they need they need some they need to find some way that you can't like exploit it. I guess. Yeah. You know, because then they'll lose money if, like, you buy a game and it comes with a digital copy, and which some the code away to yeah, else. which some games do. Like Portal Two came with a came with a digital copy that you could put on your PC, which was weird. <laughs> so if you bought like a PlayStation version, you could and had a good enough computer, you could play it on the computer too. So it seems like you could get the the physical copy to talk to be connected to the digital code. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it, it had a key in it that would unlock the digital code. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you can only use it once, and then you can't yeah. like give it to somebody else. And you actually need the, a disc or something. It would be a cool thing to do. But yeah, what's uh, that's my that's my offering. Cool. I didn't take too much time there. No, that's okay. Um, well, I'm going to offer you my favorite books of all time: uh, the His Dark Materials trilogy by Philip Pullman. Uh, the first book is called The Golden Compass, and it features a girl named Lyra, who, in her own way, uh, goes rogue, and um, she's her own woman. And uh, the, there's a specific uh, death in Rogue One, actually, that reminded me of a specific death in, um, in one of the His Dark Materials trilogy books. I don't want to spoil the books for you, so I'm not going to tell you the name of the character, but um, there is uh, someone definitely who goes down swinging in such a way that it makes my heart squeeze up all tight and uh, you feel so proud and sad at the same time. And, um, I mean, aside from that, they're they're phenomenal books. um, And also generally about uh, fighting authoritarian powers um in whatever way you can um you know lyra's a kid she's like 12 so 11 10 she's a kid 
so she obviously doesn't um, have a lot of powers or anything like that, but she uses her, her cunning and her, her wits to bring down uh, the terrible force that's governing all of us. Yeah? Yeah, it's great. Isn't it uh, considered uh, very anti-religious? It is. Is what I know about know of uh, the Golden Compass. And there was a movie that. Oh, let's not speak of the movie. Well, suppose. Well, I've heard the movie doesn't doesn't convey doesn't convey the story very well. But I, it was a it was a big deal when the movie came out. Like people being you know religious type being like, oh, this is like anti God or whatever. I mean, I've heard that about the story. Well, it definitely. Uh, I mean, the the problem is. Well, I don't want to say too much because maybe someone will actually read this and um, and I don't want to tell them what happens at the end well, or the, what, what yeah. the story is about because it takes you a while to get there. But we'll just say that, um, you know, it's – Philip Pullman is an atheist. Yeah. How about that? Sure. There it is. Yeah, so I would definitely go out and read them. I've been trying to get Trey to read them for years. Um, in fact, if you ask me really nicely, I have the first three or five chapters recorded. Uh, I read them and recorded them. So if you want to hear me reading it to you, I'll give you those for free. Just email us at the Honey Darling Show at gmail dot com. Yeah, we'll put them on the. We can put them on the feed even. Sure. Yeah, I've we'll listened. I've listened to those. Um, it's my very first time. It was, it was way before the podcast, so they're pretty rough. And I recorded them with my computer, with no microphone. Um, so I should probably re-record them. But, you know, if you want to hear it, you can. Or you can buy the audiobooks. They have a full cast recording. It's fucking brilliant. Unedited. So good. Um, I'm sure you can buy that digitally uh, from lots of places. Well, do you want to do you want to jump into the movie then? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's just try to. This is what I was thinking about doing. Uh, why don't we try to like take it from beginning to end, like as to what we can remember here? Okay, real. You quick. want to do that? So big big thing about this. Uh, this one had no opening, no opening scroll. It had no opening scroll. It just Lucas Films and off we go. Well, no, Lucas Films and a long time ago in a galaxy far far away. We had those, yeah. but then there was no like Star Wars going backwards and. You know the story, and yeah, I guess they didn't. They they had to cut costs. They didn't need a didn't want writers <laughs> to, to write the scroll at the beginning. No, that's, I'm sure that's not what it is. I think they wanted to set it apart from the other Star Wars movies, and I honestly think that that was what like really made this a better movie than than the that other than the apart. other one. They really did. Set it, it was set apart, but it but it also like really relied on the on the old movies as well. But it made the old movies stronger. I think. I agree with you. It also yeah. didn't do any. There were no like side swipes and yeah, you know, like iris they didn't, outs. They there didn't do any no, of the old editing, which I don't mind that. No, but I guess. You, but, but, it, but I, I mean, didn't. But, miss, it really, but it didn't miss it either when it, it was. It really there. kept me more engaged to not have a fucking side swipe out. Although I am always going to be in love with those from the old movie. It not having that really fit the pace and style of this. I thought. Yeah. Well, I think they. I, I kind of liked how they let. I mean, I don't know. I know there were like reshoots and stuff, but I didn't feel like it didn't feel like there were reshoots no, in it. Like it I didn't, didn't feel like there were parts that didn't fit or anything like that, or that there was like competing cuts or something like that. Because it felt like because I I read what you're saying is it didn't feel like the fucking like Suicide Squad, like Suicide Squad yeah. at all. Well, I, I read that they wanted to make it lighter because it was too dark, but it was still pretty fucking dark. Like I don't know what because yeah. they said they maybe wanted to add some humor to it and make it more like Episode Seven, but I. I mean, maybe like K two S O, but well, that was about it, you know. <laughs> about K two S O. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Now we're going back to. Yeah. Well, I mean, we should at least say what we think about it, like straight up front, like our, our feelings. Of oh, it, I loved know? it. Yeah. Except for I had a little problem with some things that K two S O. Just. There yeah. were some. There were some jokes that could have been delivered better. I thought, like even from people aside from him, like the part when the blind guy gets the thing put on his head. The bag. And he's it was like, like a throwaway. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm blind. And I'm like, that's a funny thing, but you could have done that a lot better. You could have been like, really? Or like, you know, just like one word, you right. know, where you got to think about it. He's like, or like they put the bag in him. He's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, like something like that. Like not just be like, I'm blind. You Seriously? Know, like, yeah, like that, like just a one word. I feel like that would have delivered better. 
Because then you or like think about it for a second, you know, and you're like, "Oh yeah, he's blind. Why are they doing okay, that?" Okay, buddy, you know, like, yeah, or like, or like, or like, are you for real? Or like, on him. yeah, or they probably do it, but I love to say, like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Right. <laughs> you know, something like that. Or maybe a simple, "You're a moron." Yeah. Or do you think that's going to help? Or like any sort of thing that's not just like I'm blind, you know? Like you don't need to like yeah. straight up do that. But aside from that, I thought he was an awesome character. I love that guy, Chin. Yeah, he has a weird. His name's like Chin Zimwe or some sort of weird. Uh, well, cheer it, Star Wars. cheer it, Imwe. Cheer it, cheer it. Yeah, oh. yeah. They, they gotta have their strange names. But anyway, the very beginning of the movie, it starts off with uh, Jin Irso, our main character, as a kid. Her father being involved at the Empire. He has some sort of moisture farm going on there. If you notice that, it's I like did. the same sort of moisture, moisture, moisture evaporators, which you saw in episode four. I thought that was kind of cool. Got some yeah. moisture farming going on. Um, she, uh, he, this, this dude who becomes the main villain, you know, this dude in this big cape, I don't know what his name is, but I thought his cape was beautiful. I loved his costume design. It was my favorite costume design in the movie. It was gorgeous. They all have these little like bullet pockets Yeah. that sit kind of near their armpit. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that denotes rank in some way. Sure. So he had, like, one little bullet, but his cape was attached there, or it was tucked behind, I don't know, it looked really, really cool. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I was trying to figure out which which character he was. Orson Krennic mm. is his name. Okay. So Orson, Orson Krennic has this really cool, like, he actually kind of, like, his outfit sort of reminded me of Crix, of, uh, Crix Maydine, but he was, uh, he was a rebel. Dude, it might have been Crick's Nadine with an N too. It's an N or an M. I don't know. It's been a long time <laughs> since I since sure. I talked about old Crick's. Crick's was a character. He was in Return of the Jedi for a second. He had like a huge backstory, like everybody else does. But later in life, you you rescued him in the Dark Forces game for PC. Which uh, which interesting thing, Dark Forces, the first level of it is you stealing the plans for the Death Star. So they pretty oh, much, cool. they pretty much, uh, that doesn't exist anymore either, which is kind of a shame if you played that game and you thought you were stealing Death Stars. Well, you aren't now. And now you're part of the Legends or the I mean, non-canon you still stuff. Did it, but sorry. I was, I was actually when they, uh, we'll jump forward real quick. The part when they had, uh, have all the like guys with them that join up with them in the team. Yeah. I was hoping that Cal Katarn was in there somewhere. That's the guy who stole the plans for Dark well, that Forces. Been funny. So it'd be cool if like he was sitting in the back or something. And I was like, one of those guys could be him. You know, he looked kind of scruffy looking, you know, he could have been, he could have been in there somewhere. Sure. But, uh, yeah, that would, that would have been kind of cool if they did a call out to Dark Forces, cause that was a really fun game that came out in the 90s. But, um, yeah, so this starts off with her, her father is involved with, uh, something in the Empire. The Empire comes to visit him, asking him to come back and work for them. I'm guessing he's an, well, here's what I glean. He's an engineer that they, or they kidnapped him or something, or he had been a part of the, um, Alliance. Well, I've, it could be references to like the atomic bomb and like that type of thing. Like the, the you know, the scientists didn't want to make that. Sure. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Well, that is what happened, yeah. Yeah, what so. is that? Albert Einstein had a quote that said, uh, science is, is great as long as you don't have to make money off of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he had defected and come to live on his farm. Um, and I guess he was the only engineer who could finish the Death Star. Correctly. Yeah, like he's a good engineer, but he got forced to do things that he didn't that he didn't want to do. Like I said, probably would have been a similar thing in like creating bombs and stuff like that. Where sure. People who are good with technology and they end up getting roped into making like death machines and stuff like that. Yeah, well, like, exactly. Like the Wind Rises. You remember that movie? Like the no. Japanese movie that we watched about the guy who built the war planes for World War Two. Oh yeah. It's a similar story. Oh, I thought yeah. you know where he kind of got so he built planes, but he ended up making these death machines that he didn't want to make, like that type of thing. You know. I didn't even think about that until just now, but yeah, it kind of reminded me of that a little bit. But yeah, he was in a position where he was getting forced to make this thing that he didn't want to make. But spoilers, we'll say it, say it now. I mean, it was it was unveiled that he was the one who built the fucking little hole in there that they shot to blow up the Death Star. And he puts a little you know, exhaust I exhaust like port. That's the kind of thing that normally I would be like, uh, of course you're gonna like reverse cannon, you know the hole that everybody yeah. has a problem with but i actually don't have a problem with it at all i it thought was it was badass. i thought it was fine because like everybody kind of make fun of them for that it's like okay so you make this giant killer weapon and you make this hole that if you shoot it, it blows up that's bad 
that's bad uh, mechanics or whatever. Design. But like, if he put it in there as like a kill switch right. because he didn't want to have it, that's kind of a cool idea. It's you know, way, I, I think that's it's way cool. I think that's neat, and I like how uh, he sent a message directly to Jin or so about it. In like a hologram and all that. That part was really cool. It was, it was really reminiscent, cool. reminiscent of like the Princess Leia stuff. But yeah, he basically Empire shows up. Orson shows up, uh, kills his wife. His wife tries to kill Orson. Um, she nicks him, but she dies. Yeah, she nicks him. They both shoot each other at the same time, pretty much. Or like she shoots him, and a stormtrooper shoots her. Um, she, and her name is Lyra. Which I think is probably spelled exactly like Lyra, the main character of his Dark Materials. Just saying. Oh, the oh the wife. Yep. Yeah, it is. You're right. It's spelled Lyra, yep. Lyra Irso. So just L Y R A. Making another connection there. Yeah. Well, I guess they're in there. That's why. That's why. That's why, that's why we have you on here. So <laughs> to make the connections to the books. Thanks, honey. Yeah. So yeah, she gets she gets killed. Uh, Jin Jin hides in a rock for like however long. Pretty it's much. like a rock safe house. Yeah. Tunnel. Yeah, like a bomb shelter. There it is. There it is. Thank yeah. you. She's got a bomb. She's got a bomb shelter. Uh, Forrest Whitaker contacts her before that and tells her to hide there, and he comes to pick her up. No, I no. guess. Mm -mm. No. Wasn't she? Didn't she talk to him? The she... mom calls Forrest Whitaker. Oh, okay. Somebody talked to Forrest Whitaker. I didn't remember yeah, who it she was. She calls Forrest Whitaker to say, "You're gonna have to come get our kid." You know what I mean. Yeah. That's the plan they've obviously. Yeah, I remember somebody. She knows Jin. Jin knows where to go. She's like, you know where to go. Yeah, she knows where to go. She's gonna go into the rock bunker. Yeah, I knew that. Uh, yeah, I knew that he was. Um, yeah, that I, I just remember he was contacted in some way, and that was how she found him. But I didn't remember if he had called her or if uh, the mom had. Or I didn't remember who had talked to Forrest Whitaker's character. The mom. Okay, so he comes by. He picks her up. And, uh, then we cut to, uh... Fifteen years later? Well, they show the Rogue One. They did they show Rogue One, the title. And then they show Fifteen Years Later where she's sleeping next to some sort of weird alien thing. Okay, they're, in, they're in the same, uh... And she's being held hostage. I don't think we ever find out what she was arrested for. Yeah, she was being held hostage. She, she, she was already being held hostage well, by hostage, the rebels but there. she was arrested. She yeah. had done something. Yeah. And she specifically gets broken out of uh, the transport. Yeah. And then they ask her about her father and all that. Sure. And they mention Forrest Whitaker's character. So they basically say, we need you the to go. The rebels say, yeah. we need you to talk to Forrest Whitaker because we need to make an alliance with him and his people because we can't move forward in our rebellion without him. Yeah, and they had heard they had heard about the Death Star. They hadn't seen it yet, I guess. Or I guess, yeah. it was like still so, kind of sort of a rumor, I guess. Um, they'd heard of the Death Star. There was a pilot that had defected, which you see later, I guess. The guy who goes to meet Forrest Whitaker's character. Yeah, we should learn his name. <laughs> I just, I like, I like Forrest Whitaker. I like just saying to Forrest Whitaker. No, we should learn the pilot's name. Oh. Forrest Whitaker's name is like Sor... The Saw, Saw Guerrera. Saw Guerrera. And the, the pilot's name was Bodhi. <laughs> Can you spell Guerrera? G-U-E? G well it's G E R R E R A. Oh. So would that be Guer Guerrera? Uh, because gu Guerre, après la Guerre, in French is war. So I'm sure yeah. that his name derives his last name derives yeah. there from war. Which this movie was all about it's war. An etymological nod to. Yeah. So I'm sure you noticed. Uh, you noticed our friend from our other podcast that we did about Doctor Strange. Uh, there was a familiar face from Doctor Strange in this movie. Oh yeah. Yeah, the uh, Ursa, her father, is the was the villain from Doctor Strange. Yep. Yeah, he was. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the well, I forgot what his name was in that. He's Hagar the Horrible or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's not his name, but but yeah, Mads Mads Mikkelsen. He's uh, he's her father. So. His name was like Mujak or something stupid. Oh no! Oh yeah, he's Cassilius. Yeah, we couldn't remember that. Yeah, we couldn't remember his name because he wasn't. Because I kept thinking of Mordo. Yeah, oh, Baron, Baron Mordo, because Baron yeah. Mordo's the big villain. That's the dumb name I'm thinking of. Too. He's the big, he's the big villain of the of the actual Doctor Strange comic, and it doesn't happen later. Yeah. But if you want to listen to that, uh, listen to our episode 14, 15, I think. You can find it, find it, you know, listen to it. Um, if you but, found this, you can find that. But uh, yeah, he was in Doctor Strange. Uh, Mads Mads Mikkelsen came back for this. 
I thought I thought he did a good job as he her as her father. Oh well, no, no, I thought we were talking about Doctor Strange. Yes. No, no, in the in the in the Star Wars movie, he wasn't he wasn't evil. Which, no, uh, he wasn't evil. I like that he. No, he did do. I mean, he didn't have very much to do, so he did a fine job of it. He didn't have a whole lot to do, but the stuff that he did do work worked. <laughs> His so, stuff work. Yeah. <laughs> so so the rebel the rebels take her. They want her to iron out the relationships with uh with um. Sal <laughs> With Saw, yeah. <laughs> Saw Guerra. So she goes to find him. Uh, uh, Diego Luna gets introduced. He kills his buddy who only has one arm, I guess, and can't climb walls. Not his buddy. That was uh, yeah, that wasn't his buddy. No, it was just the guy he was getting information from. Oh, okay. Because I thought that was kind of like that I was guy like, what? just kept trying to get back <laughs> yeah. to his ship. He was. He kept saying, "They're gonna leave without me. I gotta go. I gotta go." Yeah. So they weren't friends. But it was pretty, uh... He just shot him and ran. Cold. I thought that was kind of a, yeah. But I think it was supposed to be, they were kind of like, you know, they are kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, they were all this, like, you know, this group of, like, outcasts that came together. You know, they talk about that towards the end of the movie where they're like, where they're like, we're not, we're not proud of, uh, we're not proud of what we've done, but we're trying to do, uh, like, we've all done bad things. Mm-hmm. You know, they like the good, you know, the what we want from a team. You know, a team that, like, hasn't always been right, but now they're right, you know. Mm-hmm. Didn't you feel a little bit of Tones of Guardians of the Galaxy in there, kind of? Oh, sure. You know, where they're all kind of, they all kind of did their own thing, but they came, but they're together now, and they're going to fight strong, you know. And they've, they've all come together to fight against this one evil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. So, uh, after, after a gin or so goes with, um, Diego Luna. <laughs> I don't know his name either. Damn you, Star Wars names. Cassie and Andor, um, they they go with him. They meet uh, K two S O. That's the robot we were talking about earlier. Yep. Voiced by uh, Alan uh, Tudyk. Uh, Alan Tudyk from uh, <laughs> from Firefly, of course. And a lot of people, I heard a lot of people talk about him being like their favorite part of the movie. Oh. And uh, I did, some of his jokes were okay. Some of them didn't hit, but his death was phenomenal. So he did he did come around. He had a full character mm-hmm. change. And uh, I don't want to compare this too much to Episode Seven, but I will, you know, regardless. No, you're gonna have to a little, I guess. I'm gonna have to a little bit. Uh, I I think I felt more for all of the all of the for all the characters in this movie like more than I did any of the characters in Episode Seven. Well, I completely agree. <laughs> to with tell you, you the I truth, liked episode seven. and all of the and all of the deaths of that one meant more to me than Han Solo's death. I mean, I know Han Solo is a cool person, but I felt like that that just didn't work. That part just didn't work for me. Oh well, I got real sad when Han Solo died, but yeah. I probably cried. But you were sad about like it because of what time. he did, yeah. what he did in the movies before, not not the way it was executed well, right. it was in this movie. The way that they killed him on the yeah, kill your I just father bridge. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I I was I did I cried in this movie um, many times for for everyone's death. Well, I mean, so, you know. Spoilers. I'll stop now. Uh, everybody, everybody fucking dies in this movie. Everybody dies. And I thought that maybe somebody would have made it out, but nobody makes it out. I mean, I think that's why. I mean, you kind of can't have anybody make it out because the plans are secret. And... Yeah. But I thought that maybe Jin might make it out, and she's like in the background somewhere. No. Well, see, I had an idea. I heard about this. Uh, I heard about this on uh, Kevin Smith's uh, Fat Man on Batman podcast. But they were talking about how um, from the girl from Game of Thrones has been cast in uh, the Han Solo movie. Amelia Clark has been cast in the Han Solo prequel I don't movie. Know who Amelia Clark is, but it's yeah, fine. you do. Amelia Clark is the dragon woman from Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. She's Khaleesi. Daenerys. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, she's a uh, and I yeah. So they obviously she, had a kid. Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying, what they were talking about is like all of these actresses that are getting hired for Star Wars, they all kind of have a similarity to them. They're all like British. Oh. They're all like, they all kind of look the same. And he was talking it's about like eyes. a possibility of maybe that being a bloodline that maybe like Jen Erso is related to Ray and maybe Ray is related to whoever this girl is in the Han Solo movie. You know, she's definitely related to Leia. Yeah, they're all related. Maybe, well, maybe not necessarily Leia, but maybe this is, maybe they want to build this other bloodline. Yeah. With Ray from these other movies, and I thought that was an interesting idea. I thought that was a lot more interesting than her being like Luke's kid or something, you know. Sure. Even though I do like the idea of her being like Qui Gon's kid, I've never seen that before. Oh yeah, yeah. Or even like Obi Wan's, I'd be I'd be okay with that. But Qui Gon would be cool. What what they should do is that because some pe- there's some fans that believe that Qui Gon and Shmi had sex in Episode One, like off camera. 
Shmi, uh, Shmi yeah. is a, is a, is a Anakin's mom. Right. Uh, people, there's, there's theories that Shmi and Qui-Gon fucked when the cameras, when they, yeah. when they were at the house or whatever. So maybe she came from that relationship, like after Anakin left, she had, she had a kid of Qui-Gon's. She I don't know. That long. Shmi? Yeah, right? Well, she could have died between one, or, well, she could have had a kid between one and two, right? I mean, cause she died in the second one. Yeah, she died in episode so. two. I don't know. That's just a just fan theory I'm throwing out there. Oh, she's <laughs> just so depressed. It, I think it would be really sad if he slept with her. Qui Gon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that I think that he did, but some people do oh. think that maybe they did it oh, that, because really they had like a they had a all. thing. Yeah. But also, some people believe that Obi Wan had sex with everyone too. Or we just so. fuck this, you know, <laughs> lonely, depressed woman who's, who's losing her stuck child. as a civil servant. Uh, not making any money, and I'm not going to take her kid away. Yeah. But don't uh, worry, because I left her with the imprint of my dick. <laughs> that is a pretty fucked That's up way harsh. to do it, yeah. Shit. Qui-Gon. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Um, speaking of Qui-Gon, uh, when, uh, just, uh, we're just going to jump around. Um, <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> Chirrut Chir- Imwe. My uh, favorite. Chirrut Imwe was awesome. He was basically a Jedi without a lightsaber. Which you I don't you don't need. Uh, he was gonna be the guy from Rebels. Yeah. 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 I wondered for a minute if that's if it was gonna be him. Oh. Because yeah. it could have been time wise. Ickly. I mean, it's kind of around the same time, but this is this is post Rebels. Right. So there could be people from Rebels in well, I Rogue maybe One. There would, well, I just thought for a second. I was like, oh, he's blind. I wonder if he's that guy from Rebels. Oh, he could be. Yeah. No, you're right. He he could have been because he would have been the future of Jaden. Right. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know I know what you mean now. But it wasn't. Or Kanan, not Jaden. Yeah, Kanan. Kanan. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, he could, no, you're right. That could be because this is, Rogue One is after Rebels, so right. Kanan, if he's still alive at that time, he would still be blind. Yeah. But it's not him. But it's not him. He was, it, apparently he was a protector of the Jedi Temple that was destroyed there, which you saw that, right? You saw the, the, the statue that was under the yes, sand. Yes, I did. Yeah, they I looked did. like Obi Wan. I, I thought that was to really you, cool. But I couldn't yeah. talk to you because we were in a movie. But uh, yeah, I saw that in a trailer in the second trailer, yeah, and I was like, beautiful. "Oh, that's cool. That's really cool." Because they they were saying that there wasn't going to be any talk of Jedi's, but there was still a little bit. Of talk, I wondered talk why of there Jedi's. was. That was the only kind of ruin on that planet that you could see, mm. and I thought maybe there'd be more pieces of. Oh yeah. Not. Yeah. Or maybe they were, and I just couldn't discern them. But apparently, but it was pretty, that was pretty cool. Yeah, they said that was uh, they said that that was the last of the Jedi there. Mm-hmm. That was like the last Jedi temple or something that was destroyed. Right. So yeah, because uh, and then they show one thing. One thing I was wondering about, and I was going to ask you about this. I haven't asked you about it yet, though. Um, the so the Death Star is really slow at killing planets in this movie. Yeah. Was that like a setting thing? Did they have this like set to one, and they got to turn it to eleven? Like when they get to well, episode they don't four want to or kill what? The planets. They That's don't, the they're thing. not trying to destroy an entire no, planet. he says, because at the beginning he's like, I'll destroy this planet. And he's like, no, no, you don't need to show off. Yeah. Just do the city. So obviously like setting one mm. is the city, just to demolish okay. the city. Because when they were like leaving. But they could still get resources yeah. from the planet. Yeah. So Jyn Erso, she finds uh, Saw. <laughs> she, she finds Saw. And when she finds Saw, like that planet that they're on gets attacked by the Death Star. And it shoots, it and it makes this big explosion, and they escape from that, and it seems very slow, and that's where I was kind of like, I was like, what's going on here? You know, when Alderaan because got nuked, planet, yeah. when Alderaan got nuked, it was like, boom, you but know, they and gone. taking out the planet. Yeah. Just the city. Yeah. So they do this very slow explosion, and it's, and I was wondering, I was like, well, I was thinking like, well, maybe the Death Star isn't strong enough to blow up planets yet, or maybe the setting was lower, and they do, Orson talks about that later. He says that he said it to one. Yeah, says. yeah, that he said it lower. Like when he's talking to uh, Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah. Later, so they get they get she gets to see the she sees the um, effects of the the, the, the well she sees the message she does at Saws once they find each other and Saws like I've been looking for you and you find out that he trained her until he was, she was like sixteen and then he left her in a hole somewhere again. Yeah. Rude. And uh, and she was pissed off about that, but he said he left her there because people were going to turn her in because they knew she was like daughter of the empire and all that. Jyn Erso meets Saw. She sees this message from her father. Her father tells her about this Would thing. Did you that, say that she sees Saw? Her and Saw saw. Yeah, her and Saw saw her father. Yep. <laughs> she uh she's. 
she sold seashells by the seashore. And they see Saul. Saul sees her father. <laughs> yeah, they they see that there's this whole holographic thing that they both see, uh, but nobody else does. Um, every, all the shit's blowing up. She doesn't grab whatever is projecting it from on the way out because why would she? She's trying to save her life. Yeah. Well, and also like she was like on her knees, like being like, "Holy shit!" Super like. My father just told me all this crazy stuff that I didn't know. Like, I thought yeah. he abandoned me and all this stuff. Well, she's trying to get Saw to go with her, and he won't. Yeah. Well, she's also having a moment, like, with seeing her, seeing her father yes. and all that. yeah. And, and trying, to, and trying to get Saw to leave, too. And he's like, no, her. you go. I, I'll slow you down. Anyway, they get they get out of there, and they go back to the rebels, and they, they try to convince them. Well, they tell her tell them about what she says about their father and all that. They don't... Or, or no, they, don't, they haven't made it back to the rebels yet, right? Cause they, cause the rebels call him, they call, uh, Diego, Diego Luna, and, uh, they tell him, they tell him to go kill her father. That's basically what they do. So they go. Yeah, they're on their way to Udu or. Udu, yeah. It was, it was, uh, like it, it was, I think it was Udu or Udo or, well, Udo is Japanese, but, I, yeah, it was, it was something like that. But, um, in the, in the meantime, they pick up those two new characters, the three new characters, right? Yep. You pick up, we haven't even mentioned, so there's the pilot. His name was, uh, I said it earlier. Uh, Bodie. It has like, his name's Bodie. I remember it because, uh, Bodie from, from, uh, from, uh, Point Break, which we just watched. We did just watch it. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he remembered it's his name. Awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, you hadn't seen it yet. I hadn't seen it. Um, yeah, but he is, uh, huh? I can't believe that I hadn't seen Point Break. Yeah, I don't know how you missed it when you were a kid. I used to watch it all the time. Uh, Patrick Swayze's character, Bodie. And Patrick Swayze. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Bodie, uh, Bodie the pilot, he comes to see Saw. And, uh, yeah, Seesaw. Um, he, he comes to see him. They take him in. They, he talks to him. He delivers them that message, I guess, right? He delivers, delivers the thing with the message yeah. on it. And, uh, he gets, he gets his brain, like, groped by some weird squid thing, like, which they kind of just gloss over. They really do you remember just that? gloss over that. There was, like, a squid thing, like, sucking his, sucking the mind waves out of his, out of his brain. They were like, this, this horrible creature, it knows if you're telling the truth. And I guess even if it found out he was telling the truth, they still locked him up. Yeah, I thought that I thought that that thing was gonna like wipe his mind or something like that. I thought they said that his mind was not gonna yeah, be the you same. Don't survive after he gets sucked off by this uh, tentacle thing. We went like straight. Well, an- said most we- people. I say we went straight anime anime there for uh, on that part with the squid thing, but. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, the squid thing. So he he becomes part of the. They talk to him. He ends up going with them. He becomes part part of the group. They meet the blind the blind protector of the Jedi's uh, Chirrut. Yep, and his and his and his, and his partner, which they we thought maybe they could have been in love, like towards the end, like when he when he dies. Uh, there's kind of they have a moment there, but that also could have just been like a kinship or, or like friendship, whatever. You know. Well, and Jedi's aren't supposed to have lovers. We know that that doesn't matter. Cause yeah. Lots of Jedi's have lovers. Well, supposedly, supposedly that's where the dark side and the Empire came from, in the uh, in, in the prequels. But I always figured that was Lucas being jaded yeah. and all that on his ex-wife. But you know, shit happens. But <laughs> but yeah, they're, yeah, they're not supposed to have relationships and all that because it'll distract them from the from their Jedi ness. But people do. My Obi Wan had a girlfriend. Anakin had a wife and kids and all that. Of course, everybody yeah. knows. Everybody knows that. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. But I, but yeah. They were they were basically old old guardians of the temple. Temple was done. They had nothing left. I thought it was really cool. Like he talks to Jin the first time about her crystal, and she has a lightsaber crystal around her neck that her mother gave her. That her mother gave her, which we haven't even mentioned that yet. And in my mind, I thought of this happy ending of uh, of like Chirrut. Getting, getting this, taking her crystal and making a lightsaber out of it, and like him having a lightsaber at the very end of the movie. I mean, why wouldn't you think that she would have a lightsaber? Because he had the force in him, and he want, and he should have a lightsaber. But she had the force in her, I think. Jin. Yeah. Oh, I didn't feel like she was force sensitive. She believed in the force. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I figured she was just a badass girl. Yeah. You know, she was like on solo. The, the, you know, didn't really. Well, didn't, she didn't was need, a didn't, badass fighter. Didn't, 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 any, didn't need any magic tricks or anything like that. You know, yeah. rely, rely on a blaster. You know, like that sort sure. of person. Yeah. Well, there's no telling. But he, but he was. I mean, it felt like he was the only, the only little force that we saw. Even though I thought it was weird that the rebels, they all said like, "May the force be with you," like when they when they got on their ships. Yeah. Because I thought that was something that came later, like when Luke was there. Because. I don't know. I thought people had forgotten about the Jedi, but maybe the rebellion didn't. I don't know. 
Because they made it, because they made it feel like in episode four that the Jedi was, was kind of gone and like nobody really remembered it. But maybe the rebels picked it back up. Yeah. As a, a, a I mean, thing of hope. I mean, Palpatine wanted to, he wanted to bury the Jedis and he did. You yeah. Know? And, uh, and I always, I felt like the only people who maybe even saw the Jedi, cause there wasn't like a whole lot of, I mean, there were a good amount of them in the prequels, but there wasn't a whole lot of them. You could, like, maybe all, the only people who saw them were, like, the clones, or, like, the people who fought with them, yeah. or, like, people who lived in Coruscant. Like, there's all these other planets, you know? Like, people right. may have not even seen a Jedi, you know? Well, you're right. Depending on whether they, I mean, if they were involved in the Clone War, if they weren't involved with the Clone Wars at all, yeah. or they were under, like, Separatist control legend, or whatever, they probably, probably would have never saw, they probably would have never saw the yeah, Jedi. Yeah, yeah, but their you know? legends, I think, are yeah. far and wide. I'm just saying, it is possible, it's possible for them to not know of the Jedi. You're right. You know, I'm just saying... Well, that's all I'm saying. Is that it is possible because I don't think they had a, a full spread. And if, and I don't know how big the the Clone Wars got, but I don't think it got to every planet eventually. You know, like so they might well, have not seen all of it. You could try to map every planet. Well, sure. But uh, yeah, they they so they get this team together. Have a really cool team. They go to Udo and um the the blind guy Chirrut, right? Yep, I keep wanting to call him Chihiro, which is the girl's protagonist of Spirited Away. Yeah, he's not a... He's not her. Yeah. But, um, so they they go to Udo, and he and he predicts the uh, Diego Luna's character, he gets the Cassian. Yeah, it's, it's Chirrut, not Chirrut, but close enough. <laughs> Cassian gets the call from the Rebellion telling, telling him to kill her father. Um, he, he lies to her and says, like, you know, I'm going to go alone. And that guy's like, he, he has the... He has the heart of a killer, or like he's contemplating on killing, and he has he brought this, and he's like he brought a sniper gun with him, and yeah. all K2 this stuff. Tells her his yeah, rifle was in the sniper position. Yeah, yeah, and, and K two is the whole time like hating on Jen and all that, and he uh, comes around later, and he's all angry that he didn't get a blaster, and then he does get a blaster, and he's pretty fucking awesome with it. Yeah, he's a badass. Oh, before I forget, like our introduction to Chirrut, our introduction to Chirrut was pretty awesome. Where he defeated like 20, 20 stormtroopers. Yeah, you think he's just this like weird oracle dude, yeah, hanging out in the corner, and then you're like, oh well, we're never gonna see that guy again. Yeah, <laughs> and then he like pops through the other side of that wall and just like beats the shit out of like fifteen clones. I love the part where he grabbed the stormtrooper. And the stormtrooper got like shot in the nuts and like in the face. He got like, shot a lot. He, <laughs> he got shot guy like guy twenty times. Yeah, a lot, which was very cool. But I love that part. Because but he got. A lot but of he, times you see somebody use yeah. one as a shield for like one one yeah. bullet or yeah. whatever. But he got shot in the dick though. You saw that, right? Like yeah. he totally got. He got totally got shot in the nuts. He did. But I love that part where he had him and he like kept using him as a shield. But he got shot like thirty times. Sorry, number three six two nine five. Yeah. Sorry about your nuts. That whole part was amazing. Like that was the shit I wish I would have saw in episode seven. That's it's like what I would expect Luke to do, like when you actually see him do something, you yeah. know, would have him do do something like that. But yeah, yeah that was, was sweet fighting. That was amazing. That fighting was really cool. Yeah, I, I didn't want to forget about that. Like well, that, she was a badass too. Oh yeah, Jin. She was, uh, you know, her blaster. I guess ran out of blasts, and she like popped out the Billy Kane Billy Club end of it. And yeah, she, she made it into the crap out of people. Yeah, she made it into like the you know, the Billy Club or uh, yeah, Kendo know. stick or whatever you want to call it. Sure. Yeah, that was cool. And uh, the and um, Chirrut, he also had like that. He had that a uh, bowcaster sort of thing. Yeah, well, that, that was. Real, I would have loved to have seen that thing up close. It's like a big. It, it well, it kind of looked like a. Was it it kind of looked like a crossbow. Was it real? I think it was real. I think most of the stuff in the movie was real, aside from the cameos, which we haven't gotten into yet, but we need to. Yeah. Um, but that bow that he had, it was like a crossbow. But I thought that it had ammo. Along the front of the bow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. Like, the ammo was around the curve of the outside of the bow, and it, like, automatically moved into yeah. position. Yeah. So, it was just really cool looking. Yeah. Yeah, it was totally cool, and it was big. Yeah. It was, like, was it, like, part of his stick? Like, did it pop out of his stick? I'm not sure. Or was another... We'll have to see it again. Yeah. I, I definitely want to see this one again. Yeah. I like. I watched uh, episode seven again just to give it another chance, and I was like... But this one I'll see I'll see more times for sure. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, um, yeah cameos. Uh, Peter Cushing been dead for like twenty years. Uh, gets you, you gets, call it a cameo. Gets another movie. Well, yeah, I, I don't. I mean, he's not. I don't know. Yeah, he had a he had uh, Peter Cushing, Grand Moff Tarkin, 
Yeah, fully CGI in there. Looks pretty good. Looked pretty good. I mean, it still was it was you CGI, tell, but, but you could tell they tried really, really hard, like yeah. to capture his likeness. And I don't know. It was, it was yeah. really, you know, like a nine out of ten. Yeah, they tried really hard. It looked it really good, but I was good. still like, "That's CGI," you know. And I'm just like, "I love, I love Peter Cushing." Don't get me wrong. Um, I could have said at the top of the show, but if you haven't seen any of the Hammer Frankenstein movies, you should totally watch them. Peter Peter, Peter Cushing's in them. Um, the Christopher Lee's in one of them. Uh, the guy who wore the Darth Vader suit in the first Star Wars is in there. Also, like, there's lots of Star Wars people in the Hammer Frankenstein movies. They're awesome. You should watch them. Um, but. uh yeah, Peter Cushing, awesome. I was so happy to see him, but it's you know it's still just kind of like it's you you know it's not him because he's dead, and that kind of took me out of it a little bit. I liked like when you saw his reflection on the glass, and I thought yeah. that was maybe all you're gonna see. Yeah. But then he like turns, and it's like, hey, there's Grandma yeah, Stark, and he's gonna tell you a bunch of shit. And uh, I don't know if we mentioned it before in our episode three episode uh, episode three episode, but Peter Cushing hated the shoes that they gave him. We did. For Star Wars, and he wore uh, he wore slippers on set. So that was funny that in his likeness, you never saw below like his waist because they couldn't do the feet. <laughs> because he wouldn't wear the shoes. Yeah, he wouldn't wear the shoes because they were uncomfortable. But yeah, that was crazy. Like uh, Orson talked to him, and like Darth Vader was in there. He talked to Darth Vader. Like I was really happy about seeing Darth Vader in another movie because Darth Vader is awesome, you know. And he was awesome. And that the and the end part. There's an end part where he, they basically, the movie goes like all the way to the very, very beginning of A New Hope. Yeah, to the first like five To seconds, the very fucking seconds. beginning, yeah. So like there's a part with him fighting that ship that they tractor beam into the Star Destroyer at the very beginning of yeah. the movie. And he like fucking goes crazy like lightsaber in these guys. Like that was an amazing ender. I know it it's like kind of, to see him fight. I know it's like kind of fan service, but I loved it. Like it was, and he like caught, he like caught a laser bolt and threw it at him. Did you see that? Yeah, he was, yeah. <laughs> he like threw a guy against the ceiling. Yeah, he threw a guy in the ceiling he, like, and cut him in half, like grabbed, after he walked like, by him. Yeah. Weapons at the same time. Yeah. It, it was, was badass. It was insane. And then it's, and then they went into that white hallway that you see at the very beginning of mm -hmm. A New Hope. And then he's gonna, you know, and then they're gonna break down the wall and come through and he'll go choking everybody like he did in the original movie. Right. And attention to detail, they made his eyes red, his like lenses on his mask were red because they were red in the first movie and then they got darker later and Empire and Return, which nobody ever really talks about, but sure. they did. They were, they were also red in episode three when they put, when he put them on first, like when you see him put them on, they, he looks, he's just, he's through red. But uh, that's just a cool attention to detail. I like the full the full uh, Darth Vader costume for sure. Yeah, Jimmy Smith was in it. We got to see uh, Bail it's Organa. The of Jimmy Smith alive again. Yeah, Leia's dad uh, made it another made an appearance talking about Leia, and he mentions Obi Wan also, and yep, and uh, the plans, and we see Leia too at the very end. She looked pretty good. Yeah, I thought that was a little weird. Where it's like, oh yeah, there's Leia. like they turn in and you see her. I was wondering if you're gonna see her or not. But that was that CGI also. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I I guess it's kind of hokier if you don't see her. Yeah. But nobody had mentioned nobody had mentioned that she was in within that battle, like within the rebellion right. ships above the planet. Yeah. So she had been there the whole time above Snafu or whatever that. Yeah. The only beautiful planet. It was called like apparently. it was called like Scar Scarlet or Sharlac or something like that. The only pretty place, the only nice planet you would ever want to be on. Because they showed us a lot of locations in this film and in all the other films, and yeah, you see Hoth. Well, Alderaan was supposed to be really pretty too. Well, I'm sure it was. Yeah, <laughs> it was supposed to be really, really bye. nice. Bye, bye, Alderaan. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. No, it, it was, you said that was probably the best looking planet was where with the yeah. beach and like where they had that amazing fight. It was and all beautiful. That. Yeah. It looked like Hawaii. I yeah. imagine. Yeah. I don't know. I've never been there, but that's how I imagine Hawaii. Oh, there were there was a lot of lot of callbacks, a lot of Easter eggs. Um, when they they go to Yavin Four, Yavin Four is the base, uh, the the base at the end of uh, Episode Four. Yeah. Um. Then you see like a you know where you know the guy in the tower, like you see him a bunch of times in Episode Four. Yep. You see when they leave and they're not they're not okay to leave, and you see them like bringing people in and all that. Um. One thing I want to forget, I want to say before I don't before I forget, um, the two characters from Mos Eisley, the dude with the messed up nose <laughs> yeah. and, and the butt face, they were in uh. They were in that place that they met, uh, that, that Jin first went to, wherever they were at, the place that, like, Saw was. And they survived, because didn't that place blow up? Uh, part of it did. They blew up the sea. Yeah, somehow they made their way to Mos Eisley. But they, like, run into Jin, and the guy's like, hey, you fuck know. You, you and then you see them, and, uh, 
I, I mean, that's cool that they're in there, but the, I always wanted them to have the origin story that was in Robot Chicken. Just, which is? Which is, uh, the Robot Chicken does a lot of really good Star Wars stuff. Actually, they even made tons a, and tons even and made tons. a show called Star Wars Detours, which has been, which has been shelved because Disney didn't want any sort of funny thing about Star Wars if they bought Star Wars, which sucks because I really want to see those episodes. But, uh, they did, they did a, they did a Star Wars, uh, skit where, um, where you see like what their lives before they meet up with Luke and Obi Wan in the cantina, and basically the butt face guy is like this respectable architect that like you know that that like you know designs buildings and stuff like that, and his crazy drunk friend is the guy with the with the upturned yeah. nose, and he's like at work you know trying to make money for his family and all that, and his buddy like shows up like completely wasted and he's like hey dude let's go drink for lunch hour you know and he's he's like no I gotta work and he's like come on dude it'll be fun. And they go to, and they go to the bar, and his friends just like fucking around, like uh and the butt face guy when he goes up to Luke, like in in the movie, he's like, burr, 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 and the guy's like, he says he doesn't like you, and in the yeah. and, and in the robot chicken, he says like, hey man, I really like your hair, dude, and like, yeah. and his buddy's like, he doesn't like you, and he's like, no, I didn't say that, and he's, he's like, like, I don't, and he's like, and he's like, I don't like you either, and then uh, they get into the fight, and he gets his uh, drawing arm cut off, so he can't architect anymore, yeah. and it shows him going back to work drew a picture of a house that looks like a kid's drawing and he gets fired but <laughs> that's what i liked as being their origin that like that the walrus guy with the butt he was the nice guy and his friend was just a was just, just a dr- a was just a drunk dick. idiot that would yeah. get him in trouble wherever they went you know yeah, that's pretty funny. and i thought that was genius and that's what i wanted to believe was the origin story of them i know that robot chicken is not canon but I wish that some of it was because I think it's hilarious. But uh yeah, I just wanted to make sure and and make a note on that on those two guys being in there. Which yeah, it was it was funny to see them, but I like them being unless I mean for all I know the the butt guy could be still be nice and his friend's just an asshole and you know they just happen to be hanging out there for whatever reason. And then they get away. They made it out, but also I mean all the rev- all the like their friends made it out too. I mean I think it was possible. They probably had a ship that they got. I mean, yeah, they, they didn't destroy the entire. They were on their way to leaving. Yeah, they didn't. Dis- I mean, there was a lot of time from after you saw them, so they could have just took it off. And they didn't destroy the entire planet, like you said. But uh yeah, they go to, they go to kill her father. Like um her father stands up for the other scientists. Like the Orson, like says, like one of you walk forward. Whoever whoever betrayed me and like let out this information about the Death Star, you know, you you step forward. And nobody and, does. And then and he'll die. And nobody else will die. It was like, and he's like, oh, all right, I'll kill all of you. And then Max Mikkelsen comes out and he's like, no, I did it. And he still ends up shooting all of them. Kills and, all the kills everybody. And uh, Jin came down, went down there once she figured out that um, that Cassius was gonna kill her father. Cass, Cassian was going to kill her father. So she comes down there with her father and she, and he pretty much gets like dive bombed by the rebels. You know, they, yeah. they come in, they, they show up, they know where they're at. Um, she sees, you know, she gets to talk to her father for a second before he dies in her arms. And he says that, you know, everything was for her and all that. So they have that nice moment there. And, um, yeah, that was, that was crazy that, that he gets, he gets killed there. They get separated from that dude. Then they go back to the rebellion. They try to convince uh, Jin's trying to convince everybody that her father like made, built this stuff in the plans, and like nobody would really go for it. So she's kind of defeated. And then uh, Cassian's like, "Hey, it's we." All his buddies. He's like, "All these guys believe you, so we're let's You're go." Volunteer to fight. Yeah, and they and they steal that imperial ship that's yeah, there. So they literally do go rogue. Which all the ships look awesome in this movie, by the way. I thought they, they looked, look thought they looked awesome. really You're cool. So right about that. There were some really cool looking Tie Fighter sort of things that like had the Tie Fighter wing, but it was like horizontal. Do you remember that? It's like curved yeah, they over. Looked, um, like I that mean, was really cool. So many cool. And their ship that they had yeah, that, like that him and K two S O like that that ship was cool looking. It was weird looking. But um, yeah, so they decide to go on this mission. And, uh, and then you hear their name, like, as they're leaving, you know, it's just kind of cheesy, but kind of fun at the same time, like, yeah. where, where, uh, Bodhi, Bodhi's on the, and they're like, uh, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, we're going here. And they're like, well, what's, what's your code name? Yeah, and he, and he's like, we're Rogue One, you know, so then they're like the first, because if you remember, uh, Rogue Two was, uh, in Empire with the guy that was looking for, uh, yeah. I think the the guy who was looking for Luke in the sand, in the in the snow was Rogue too, so they were they were the Rogue One before that. It's kind of a cheesy way to put it in there, but that was cool. And they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna go there on our own. Empire has no idea they're there. Orson's there. 
Orson has like a second with Vader for a minute where Vader chokes him out. Like that was cool. Yeah. Vader's like, know your place, bitch. Yeah, because he's like, oh, will you please tell the Emperor that I did all this shit? And Vader's like, no, fuck you. No, so you see a little force you. choking in there. He looks like he had never seen it before. Yeah. The force choking. Uh, they, they did a re- lot of really good stuff with like with them powering up the Death Star. It looked like exactly like it did in the 70s movie. Yeah. Like they hit the same buttons. Like they had the guys with the hats like all in the same spot. Yeah, they had those two guys. So they had those two guys standing by the laser. Like how they ducked every time. Like they yeah. did that every time. Like they really studied the shit out of that original movie. You they know, did. like I think they were trying not to do the things that you didn't like about episode seven and yeah. that they were trying not to pay homage they were trying to be precise yeah well and they didn't have parts where like a character just puts a rebel hat on and looks at the camera and it's like hey. ah, yeah. you know like uh right like that part was so stupid you know it's like the uh okay it's like cool you put on a prop from the old movie all right yeah no big deal but this but they like this the screens the screens had the exact same stuff on it that you saw in that movie you know like yeah. they had the same maps and graphs and shit that they had in like the control room and they hit the exact buttons and all that, and I was like, that's awesome. Like, they studied the shit out of it, and they know exactly what's going on here, and they know the way this works, you know? Right. To make it look the same. And that was really, and I was really impressed by that. It looked cool and scary. Yeah. And I don't know how those guys in the pipe lived. The guys in the pipe? Yeah. In what pipe? The guys in the tunnel of hell. Where the evil beam is coming out of. Oh, the guys that like duck? It just seems when the beam like comes that's by them? Like radioactive or something? They're dying, you know? Well, I mean, uh, they, apparently they, they're probably only in there for like a week before uh, the before Death Star was destroyed, so, you know, right. they probably would have, it probably when had it coming later. Radiation poison immediately. Yeah. The stormtroopers looked really cool. There were some variations to it. They're there like, was some like, they're, uh, they're like black. Fat, phasma, phasma. They were like black troopers. Yeah. They, had, they, they were had shiny like, black. Yeah. Like Phasma Fatabishin. Just Phasma is her name. Yeah. Captain Captain Phasma. Her. <laughs> but uh and they were all shiny. Yeah, and there was a lot of cool like uh stuff with the with the ATATs and ATSTs and yeah, all that. Yeah, they blew like, them up in some cool ways. Lots of really cool like ground combat stuff, like ground uh Really just really great fighting. Well, lot, lots of really good, like, uh, spaceship stuff, you know, so like, uh, much good spaceship stuff. You know, like, the stuff in, uh, stuff in episode 7 with Death Star 3 was just kinda like, eh, whatever, you know, like, but I like this better. They really did put this to shame. Well, like, the put, fight- put this put that to shame. So they, they go in, they go onto this planet looking for the plans, where the, where the Empire is. They set all the explosions up, and like, they don't even know they're there. But once, but the Rebels come to find them later. And there's like the shield that gets closed. Yeah, once so they like, start fighting the rebels, yeah. like, we have to help them. Yeah, so like some people are like outside of the planet, some people are under the planet, but they can't leave and they can't talk to them. Like They're there's all this crazy field. stuff going on. Yeah. But that whole fight, like above the planet, reminded, it's awesome. well, it reminded me so much of the fight in Return of the Jedi. At the end of Return of the well, Jedi. I thought it was great that they, when they like, fought above, when they fought above uh, the Endor and then yeah. them on Endor, it like reminded well, yeah. me so much of that. I thought it was great that but they in a crashed good their ships. Into each other. Into each but, other in order to take out the shield, because yeah. that was the only way. Well, that's what they did in, um, well, they sort of did that in Empire, too. Or, or no, it was, a. Uh, it's either Empire Return, but they do it where they run into each other. The two yeah. ships run into each other. Yeah. And well, they also really... did where they shot one ship and it landed in the Death Star and all that. Right. But this was so, so severe. It was like bumper cars of ships. Um, and they yeah, dude, went, just they like... They both went down, and it... uh, their, all their deaths broke the shield. Uh-huh. Yeah, and dude just like ran into it and just like pushed the one ship into the other ship. Yeah. So, uh, when we, we, scary and awesome. We took a break for a second, uh, and during the break I was just looking online for, for like your Rogue One stuff, and I found out, um, so, uh, Gold Leader, Gold, Re- Gold Leader and Red Leader are in the movie, like who, who were, who were in the original movie, like the pilots. You see them outside yeah. of the, outside of the planet. And I was like, wow, that's awesome, because it was not CGI at all. Like, that was actual footage. Oh, right. From the original movie. And I, and what I found out was, they found, like, big giant canisters of film from Star Wars that was never used. Oh, that's so badass. And they took it, and they basically, like, cause it was just them Spliced in the cockpit in. with nothing around them. Yeah. 
So they basically like put the shit behind them that was happening in the movie, oh, that's and they used these really un cool. these like unused scenes of these pilots that they had recorded extra that they didn't put in yeah. the movie, and they put it in this movie. That's fucking amazing. That's like so that is cool. so cool. So like it wasn't CGI; it was the actual fucking dudes that like were their first Death Star the first time. You know. They only added Blue Leader, our friend. Blue leader. They oh added yeah. Blue leader for this. Oh yeah, the the guy from The Exorcist, yeah, which is which, the, uh, which is a really TV show. which is a really good show. You should you should watch it. Or, watch it on Hulu or like buy it on Amazon or do something so people know that you like it so they can give them a second season. Second season. It'd be great if they had a second season. Because it's a movie, it's a show that you don't think would work, but it actually does work in yeah. some way. And I'm like, and don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of the original Exorcist. It's like one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And uh, I like what they did with the show. So well, they could That's easily follow. Just a tangent off here for a second. They could easily follow the priests. Yeah. Um, instead of the the family of people who are being exercised. Oh sure. The priest could go somewhere else and exercise someone else. Well, that's. I kind of actually thought that was going to be the original take of that show. Right. Was that um was that it was going to be like about the priest and they go and to different ex, ex, they go to different possessions kind of like the um outcast show yeah so like similar yeah. similar to that is what I was thinking was kind of where they were going to go with it but they did it completely different and it surprised me in ways that I, stuff I didn't think they were going to do but anyway one of the priests from that show is in the rebellion he has this crazy mustache He's but the blue leader. but I, I yeah I recognize his face and unfortunately he didn't make it out of the movie. Because which, no one made it out of the movie. which nobody did, but I was like, "Oh, cool! There's, there's, there's him. He's, we, know, we know him. Yeah, mm-hmm. he. Uh, a friend of mine worked on uh, worked on The Exorcist, uh, and it was shot in Chicago. And I wondered. I'm sure he told. I'm sure he was on Rogue One before he was on The Exorcist. This yeah. actor. So I'm pretty sure that somebody found out that he was on Rogue One, and I'm sure he got questions from the entire crew, being like, "Hey, you know, I'm sure he didn't say. Yeah. Sure, I'm sure he didn't say anything, but they would be yeah. like." Oh man, you on Rogue One? Like what? Like how was it? Like what's going on? You know, can you tell us anything? And I'm sure he couldn't tell anything. But that'd be a fun thing to be able to talk to him and be like, "Oh man, you know, you were on this." He's like one of the few actors on that show that I don't actually know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, shot in Chicago, so you know, you yeah. know, like a lot of a lot of theater people. A lot of people. But yeah, that uh, the whole third act of the movie was was amazing. I mean, I thought the whole movie was amazing, but yeah, it was so like gripping. Like I remember, you had to go to the bathroom, but you. Stayed through the whole thing. I had to go to the bathroom maybe about an hour in, and yeah. I had to go, you know, and I, I, we were sitting in reclining seats. Yeah. Uh, and I put my seat down as if I were going to get up, and I couldn't leave. I think you were going to, I think you were going to go like right, was it like right when they were getting to Udo, or was it like when they were leaving for Scarskin or whatever it's called? I don't know. But I, I had to go, and then I was just like, nope. This is one of those times when you might pee your pants, but you can't leave. Yeah, it was it was incredibly gripping, super intense. Like I didn't feel, I don't know. In the other movie, I felt like kind of bored in a lot of places, and I didn't feel bored in this it was one. Forced for sure. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was. It forced forced you to awaken yourself after you fell, fell asleep in the first <laughs> act. But uh, yeah, as uh, I found some of it boring, like I could imagine that one brilliant. boring. But this one was like yeah, I felt it was like it. Gorgeous. I felt like it worked. The what it, pacing was really wonderful. Yeah, I felt like it would have what it wanted to do worked, and I think a lot of it had to do with like what I said before it was like making it different from the other movies. Yeah, and making it about people that you know are part of part of this bigger story, but they're all new characters. So like you can. They don't need to be a certain way, and you don't need to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think it, and I was trying to, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, do you think I would have liked this? I was thinking to myself, I was like, would I have liked this as much if this would have came out as the first movie? Yeah. I probably wouldn't have, because I would have been expected the other movie, and be more excited for that. So I feel like it kind of hit me at the right time. Like, I think it hit me at the right time with me being very disappointed with the last movie, that okay. I enjoyed so this mean, one better. You you mean you were trying to figure out if you would have liked it as much if it had come out when episode seven did? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm, I was trying to think if you I would said have the liked first it. First one, and of course that means nothing. What the fuck does the first one? Mean? The first one I meant was episode seven. Right. I meant the first one in this new round of Star Wars right. movies. Which now I understand. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, that's what I was trying to think of to myself. I was like, if this would have if this would have been the first Star Wars oh, movie, hell yeah, I would have. I was just I saying, if I would have liked it as much, I mean, I still would have liked it because it's a good movie. But I'm like, would and I would have liked would have meant as much to me? I guess. Disappointed yeah. in episode seven. Oh yeah, if it, if it had to if it Honestly, had to be like runner up to that, first, yeah, I would have maybe felt the way that you did about episode seven. Yeah. 
now for now it has like a fine it's fine it seems yeah. fine it's nostalgic you know i me- i remember all of it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well the problem like one of the biggest problems with episode 7 is that it's not uh, it's not a whole movie in any way yeah. like basically all it is is like it's a magic trick it's like oh hey Here's a box. It's a mystery box. You know what's in it? Nope. It's like, are we going to tell you? Nope. And this is the whole thing is like, oh, we want you to wonder what's in the next movie. And there's not really a full story in there. And this is a full story. It's an actual movie. This one is just a part of a series, you know, and that's what kind of sucks about it. Because it's like there's nothing really – there's so many things unanswered. And it's like there's not really a full story in here. It can't stand on its own. You know, like all this – Stuff that One is not really is not in this a lot movie. Of questions is to just kill everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, and I felt questions to be asked there. And I felt for every character here, like I, you know, I, all their deaths, like, yep. was like, oh shit, like even the droid, like the droid comes around. He I just, cried when the droid died, and the, even I didn't even think he was that great. The droid, but like, his death was beautiful. the droid, like, kind of hated Jin, like, the whole time. Like, he kept saying, like, oh, she's gonna turn on you. And he talks about how he wants a blaster. She gives him a blaster later. You know He's what a I badass with it. I think my problem was with him was that he had too much of a personality. I found it yeah. odd that he wasn't even, cause even C3PO, who does have a yeah. big, a big personality, um, he still is logical in a way that robots are logical. Yeah. So he has ideas and opinions, but he's still like, oh no, that's 3.5. And, and they tried to do that with K2, but uh, maybe it was just, he sounded so sarcastic all mm-hmm. the time. I oh know. yeah. I just don't, I don't know. I mean, There's I kind of like what, I mean, I like where they're going with it. I understand, like, they kind of want to make him kind of like Chopper, human. you know? Like Chopper from yeah, Rebels, so like, has sass Chopper on him. doesn't have words. Yeah, Chopper doesn't say anything. He's just like, burr, 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 but he still like has sass. But you know that Chopper's always saying like, "Go fuck yourself, motherfucker." Yeah, but <laughs> I'm saying great. that's what I'm saying. He's sassy. Like he's very much like, yes. "Oh shit, I'm not gonna do that." He's like, "Oh, you want me to do that? Fuck you, I'm not gonna do that." You know, I mean, you could basically put it up him that's being a really like, dumb idea. being like, "Fuck off," like, and that's probably what he's saying. So I think maybe they're trying to go for that sort of thing, but well, I think that's where they were trying to make the movie funnier, and I think that probably my problem. Is that they were trying to make the movie funnier? Well, I mean, they all of all of his lines could have been changed because his voice, his mouth never moves. Right, like right. no, none of it needs to sync. So they could have changed that stuff at any point in the edit, you know. So he right. could say something completely different. All they need is like people reacting to it and like you know, yeah, talking back to him pretty much. So, but, but I, I loved I loved him in the end. I loved where yeah. he got to. He fought. He fought for them, and he dis he like. Uh, Self destructed himself, like and and killed like thirty stormtroopers in the process. Yeah, it was really beautiful. Yeah, and he got shot like ten times and like kept fighting as much as he could. But the, I liked that she gave him a blaster, and he was like, it was like Willow, you know, it's like you are great. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, he never said he was great with the blaster, but then when he has it, he's like, uh oh, western six shooter, young yeah. guns here, you know. I'm not even looking at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that part was really cool. And yeah, the fight at the end was really cool. I don't know, I just, I And then there was like the, the only thing that I thought was kind of silly was there like, there's a uh, sort of like, um, tape deck, uh, crane machine. Oh yeah. <laughs> Where it's like. <laughs> They're like, wah, wah. It, it, uh, it, uh, I forget what it's called, like, there was an old, They can't uh, even like punch in like A32. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the machine goes together. Yeah, some sci fi thing. Manipulate this crane. Oh, there's an thing. old, there's an old video game. I think it was called like <laughs> Cyber Sled or something like that. We had like two joysticks and like you hold both of them forward to go forward and hold like right back to turn right or like yeah. left back to turn left. It kind of reminded me of that. Like it's like I'm controlling this old video game where I have to like move this way and this way. Yeah, that was kind of a silly way to add. I just like, thought of it like a crane machine. Yeah. Like, oh, get it doesn't always close. Like get it comes Pikachu. down and sometimes yeah. it doesn't close all the way. Yeah. Put another quarter in. We need that tape. <laughs> you gotta call Orson and have him, uh, you know, mess with the, apparently that's what you do in Japan, like if the, if the crane machine doesn't work so many times, you talk to the management and they'll make it so you can win. Yeah, they'll adjust it so you can get whatever stuffed animal you want to get out of there. This is what I heard. But yeah, that part was kind of crazy and, uh, good thing she found one that had a clip on it so she could stick it on her belt, like while she was climbing up I thought and all that. that. Her belt <laughs> it really helped. Had a clip. Oh, okay. I thought I just when she clipped it on her a notch or something, but yeah. Yeah, they had it to. It did seem real convenient that, like, oh, that's why my carabiner's there. Thank God. Yeah, she had to find the files from this giant tower of files, 
and the file was called what was her name? Stardust. Stardust. Yeah. 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 Stardust was with her. Game and story. Was her kid? Uh, nice I was fairy tale. I was thinking of uh, Stardust Memories as Woody Allen. Maybe. Sure. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's another thing. But um, yeah, that's, uh, it was uh, called Stardust, so it was meant for her to find, and and also when they when they booted it up when they sh- when they sent it to them. It was the exact same stuff that they looked at in, in episode four. Yeah, exactly the same. No difference. Like it was the same sort of seventies CGI model stuff. You know, yeah. that they saw that looked really bad. Like that was it. That's what they showed, and that's really cool. And C three PO and R two were in there for a second, which that was a spoiler with, that I found out early and wish I didn't know. But oh, C three PO and R two are in every movie, and I should have figured they'd be in there because they've yeah. been in every single well, Star Wars movie. It really movie. was ten seconds, if that. Yeah, they were kind of like, oh, what's going on? Nobody Three tells PO us anything. was like, I don't yeah. want to go to a war. Yeah. That seems stupid. Yeah. And R2 was like, Meh. I just thought 3PO was kind of like, a, if you take like Spock and make him annoying, that's basically what 3PO is, yeah, kind of. Yeah, totally. Because he does the same sort of thing as Spock, because Spock would do the same thing where we would say that's like... That's what I'm saying about them being logical. Yeah, like, be, well, but he'd do like, a, like you, this, the possibility of this happening is like 30 to 1. You know, like right. he would say stuff like that. But he's not like... He's not like annoying and whiny and all that. He's a, he's great, but yeah, that's what I just figured like, that he was like, was like yeah. s- logical, but he's also snarky, and I the, I guess those two things just seem at odds to me. Sure. So yeah, yeah. Is there anything? Uh, so they blew up Hawaii and everybody died. They blew up Hawaii. Everybody died. All the deaths, like I felt like, meant something. Like uh, what the about one. I am the force, and the force is with me. Yeah. The well, I want to touch on it. Before I forgot the 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 fighter pilot, the the Imperial fighter pilot, he finds a way for to jam them Bodhi. into the uh, Bodhi, try to jam them into the tower to get communication to the rebels outside of the planet. That was like his his big arc. They needed to. The reader I want to talk about him is that Chirrut, he needed to go switch, do pull the switch for him, yeah, so he could get that communication out. So he walks through. Yeah. He basically walked through the the Valley of Death or whatever with the force yeah, on his side. The, yeah, he he walked through all the all the everyone shooting at him. all the shots, you know, with the force, you know, believing in the force. Uh, nothing hit him. He was able to flip the switch, and then he died after that. And then, uh, and then his friend, friend, lover, whatever, yeah. whatever you want to call it, um, decides to go. Uh, you know, he holds him when he dies, and he says, and he "I am the force, forward. and the force is me." And yeah. then he decides to go and kill a bunch of people before he gets before he gets killed too. Beautiful death. Yeah, but all the, I would say like all the and deaths the I felt. And the last thing he does is look back at, um, yeah. I'm going to say it's his lover, man. Yeah, he looks back at him when he dies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was all, I mean, they were all each, all that each other had, you know. I, did, I mean, you can look, you can look at it anyway. I was saying, I felt like all of the deaths like worked, well, they worked the way they were supposed to work, I think. Yeah. Like I felt for all they of them. They tugged on your heart the right yeah. way. I felt more, I felt more for them than like Hans Hole got getting thrown I'm down so the, the happy whatever, you too know. that there was no kissing. Yeah, I was I happy they, they didn't were gonna kiss make each out other. On that fucking elevator. Yeah. I thought they were going to make out on the beach. Yeah, they didn't. They just and held they hands didn't. and watched. A, yep. That had such a comic book moment to me too. Like uh, it actually kind of it reminded me of a uh, Lady Snowblood. Yeah. You know where she's like, I'm I'm dying. I'm like dying by my own creation, kind of. Well, yeah. Lady Snowblood is I'm dying by my own creation, but she's like I'm dying by my father's creation. But it right. felt like very much like a comic book ending, you know, where it's like everything's come full circle, and now this is. I'm going to die from the thing that I was fighting against, but I still made but it. But I won. But, but she served her purpose. You know what I mean? Like, she made her... And I don't mean, like... I'm not trying to say that in a bad way. I mean, like, she... That was her meaning in life. Like, she did that. Like, she yeah. did what she was there to do, you know? And that's kind of what I felt like, like from all of the characters. That it was like, you know, this was your this was your story. And this was your journey. And you made your, and you made your journey. Yeah. And, then you, and then you died. And, For sure. Yeah, I had no. I, I guess I should have known that everybody was going to die, but I just didn't think about it going into it. And what was another thing that was great about this movie is that I knew like almost nothing about it. Like I, I saw some trailers that I thought looked cool, but I didn't really. Yeah, I, I knew they were looking. Trailer. I knew they were looking for the Death Star plans, but I didn't really know like what's going to go to another or another thing. I really yeah, paid I no attention to who the characters too. were. I knew that there was a girl in it. Yeah. I didn't know who any of those characters were, no. and I didn't look at it. I, I really kind of tried to stay away. Well, I think that really helped, like, going into it, not really knowing anything about it. I always try to do that. Yeah. You know, if I want to see it, I want to see it. Yeah, it's best to just jump into it without knowing anything. And I didn't really know very much about it, so I was kind of like, oh, well, I should sort of find it out as I, I go. I was confused, and I had thought that uh, that part in, is it in 
uh, Return of the Jedi. Where Which part? Because I had thought that they knew that everyone had died in this endeavor. Oh, the Bobbins? Yeah. Yeah, that was... I confused that in my head for a minute. And I just thought that everyone getting the Death Star plans out dies. Like, I just thought that that was already canon. I thought that was, like, an already known thing. So I expected everyone to die. Mm -hmm. Even though I invented that in my own head. Uh, But it didn't demean, it didn't demean or deplete any of it from me. But I, you know, I had thought from the beginning nobody's getting out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I thought that, I mean, just because I thought of like the, you know, wouldn't it be cool if if Jen or so was like Ray's lineage or something like that, that would make her seem cooler. Or if they found a way to like tie the side movies into the regular movies and maybe that would make that one cooler. I don't know. Well, we don't know that she doesn't have a kid. No, or maybe she had siblings. I don't know. Well, she sure. did, didn't she have? I, I thought she we had. Don't know that either. I thought she had a sister at the very beginning, but maybe oh. that was just two different cuts where she looks sort of different. Oh, yeah. I thought she had a sibling for a second. No, but yeah. Um, overall, overall, I really enjoyed it. I mean, we've you know, it was it, it was it made it brought my Star Wars faith back. Like last year, I was so depressed after the episode seven, but yeah, I episode seven was not it, definitely didn't deliver like what uh, I wanted, and and this nine. one. And this one, which I didn't expect to deliver, totally delivered. Because I was, like, totally not excited about it at all when I heard about it. And if you saw some of the promo video, promo footage, there's, like, a picture of the cast that basically looks like a low-budget sci-fi show that's going to get one season, maybe. Right. You know? <laughs> it looks like this is sort of like, oh, there's these guys, you know? And then it looked like they weren't really in... I don't know. It didn't look like any of it was going to work, and it just worked like so good. Like it was a, beautiful. It kind of like like I said before, it kind of reminded me a little bit of like Guardians, you know, or like we. It was some of the early. You know what's some, different is they made a movie about people. Yeah. Who got into a cr- crazy action, you know, sequences and things like that? Instead of making a movie about crazy about crazy action, action sequences. sequences. Oh yeah, for sure. No, definitely. I totally agree with you. No, because that's the I consider that good writing. It should be well, more right, about the. Uh, yeah. Should be more about the characters, and I guess you know people say that for episode seven but i don't i felt like it was just like it was like it's like this thing this thing this thing this thing this thing this thing explosion and like uh, uh okay <laughs> you know yeah there wasn't a whole i don't know there wasn't enough like human really moments built, for for me really i guess the characters without it feeling forced haha in any way yeah. um yeah it, it took its time in teaching us about these people it let all of them grow yeah. and change and make decisions uh, you know, it gave everybody a, a moment to, to figure out who they were and to do the right thing and to die doing it. So I thought it was really, yeah, really gorgeous. And all of their, and they were all, uh, they were all important in their own way. You know, there was only like five of them, six counting the droid. Yeah. But they were all fully established, kind of main fully rounded characters that, yeah. that you understood, even though they didn't. I mean, they ha- all had enough screen time for you to understand that. And I feel like that's really what worked. And, and I liked that it kind of went and that it went away from a lot of the stuff that was set in the original trilogy. Even though I found myself wishing that there was John Williams music in it, it wasn't John Williams. Yeah, I noticed well, right off the bat that the music uh, felt a bit lacking. Well, it was there was no there were no theme there were no Star Wars themes in there. Yeah, but there were like some parts that like worked so well that I kind of just really wanted it to be like no 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 and like just be right there just yeah. because it, this movie worked so well. That no, I wanted I it to have noticed, that uh, Williams right score. Right in the beginning when they were playing whatever the music was, whoever wrote the music for this, um, I was like, oh, it's not even, it's not even remotely Star no. Wars theme And that was kind of a bummer. It's not. But he, uh, the guy who did it, like, he's done a bunch of other shit. I forget, I forget I'm gonna, what. I'm, like I said, I'm going to need to see it again. But right off the bat, I did notice that we didn't have John Williams. And yeah. I missed him. Yeah, I knew that. And then I kind of completely forgot about the musical underscoring of the movie, com- like, entirely. Sure. Which means that, uh, I mean, you know, it wasn't offensive. Yeah. But it wasn't memorable. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, but the music wasn't memorable in, in Episode 7 either. You know, th- yeah. that's what I said. Uh, that's what I said on our podcast. It wasn't. You're right. It but really I mean, wasn't. This is what, I mean, say whatever you want to say about the prequels, but their soundtracks are fucking awesome. Like the, like the Williams soundtracks are amazing. Like yeah. the whole Duel of the Fates the, na, 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 is like such a badass song. I even really like yeah. that ending song, uh, the parade song. No, oh, yeah. The, the first one. The, the big trumpets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, cool. Yeah. 
No, the the in like the Anakin like Anakin Padme love theme, I think it's fucking amazing, and like the theme of him like going to the dark side, like all that stuff was so good, and like the Obi Wan Anakin fight theme, yeah. like it was. Yeah, I I felt like that, you know, whether the whether the stuff worked or not for you, I felt like the music definitely worked for you. Like the, I don't know, the love music was so good that you kind of, you know, you could convince yourself that they were in love because that music was so good. It's like, well, you, know, you could. Anyway. I'm saying you could because of how great it was. So I missed that in it, but and the CGI threw me off a little bit just because of knowing Peter Cushing and knowing he's dead and all that. But right. coming into it, maybe not knowing that, I might it would have been more convinced by it. But as far as CGI that I've seen, it was really fucking good. It was and they the best, probably I think. we didn't watch all the credits, but they probably had millions and millions of people working on that oh, fucking yeah. thing. You know. Of course, I left immediately to go to the bathroom because I had to pee for basically the whole movie. Yeah. And I was wondering if they might do an after credits thing just because it was going different from the other Star Wars stuff, but they didn't. There's no after credits. Oh, and that's fine. It's not really an after credits kind of. Well, you, it's done. Like, I mean, what are you going to show? Like, right. them. Smoking the smoking planet ruin. Yeah, it's like, what is the after credits going to be? The, the beginning fish. of episode four? Like, it's just going to go straight <laughs> into episode four? Yeah. But yeah, it it makes me excited because people, you know, I've heard people talking about like maybe that the side movies won't go on for that long, and the side movies are kind of what I was more, more excited, excited about. about. Yeah. Well, that was definitely. Well, because I, I mean, like if they can make another movie that good. Yeah. Make it. Well, that was like my favorite. That was like always my favorite comic stories were like the ones that were about that weren't about the main plot. You know, like the ones yeah. like like I Bottle like episodes. Well, yeah, like the one like I told you, there's a Fantastic Four comic. That's just about the thing and Johnny Storm doing pranks on each other, and that's like a whole <laughs> yeah. that's like a whole issue, and sure. that's like a, a great fucking issue, or like the issues of Spider Man where he'd like recall going to a baseball game with his uncle, like stuff like that that was like on the side that was just character development. Yeah, I love those. I love those issues. Or they do like X Men issues about a mutant that you never saw before, and you'll see his like origin story and like how he did all this. Maybe he dies in the end or whatever. Well, that I think stuff, all that the stuff was really cool. Buffy too. All the bottle yeah. episodes of Buffy are. Best. Yeah, I'm sure. Totally recommend it. Uh, I think a lot of, I, I saw a lot of people online, like a lot of people who are not, who didn't like episode 7 liking this one, so. I just glanced at IMDb and it was at like an 8.5 out of 10, so I'd give it a 9 even. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I didn't really look at like their star system because they've, uh, well, right. I mean, we just watched Chicago Cab, which I think is great, and I think they gave that like a 2. Probably, great. probably because it's an indie movie, but it has a lot of heart to it, and that's why it's great. But, uh, I don't, you know, I just, from seeing people talk about it, cause I, you know, I, I like. I think it's fan rated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was looking at like comments and stuff that people had said, but no spoiler stuff I didn't see aside from looking at some Easter egg thing, which is dumb. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'd like to see it again. I felt like it really, yeah, it really, it worked, it worked, good. it worked in ways that episode seven didn't work, you know, cause episode seven was too much like, we need to build this next movie, you know, everything will be in the next movie, like, and all this stuff. And, right. And it's like we have to. And this one, they just killed everyone. Yeah. And this is, and, and I've heard, I've seen people like criticizing other people on that also being like, oh, you didn't like episode seven because it was too much like the old ones and this one is like the old ones, but it's better somehow. You know, like that type of thing. It's like, well, yeah. Cause like what you're saying, it's not, it's more precise. It's not like, it's like they understood it. It's like watching, I mean, not the, not H.J. Abrams again, but it's like watching like his version of Star Trek versus watching a version of Star Trek made by a fan, you know. Right. Would actually seen, would actually seen Star Trek. <laughs> You know, because JJ went out, kind of totally said that, I mean, you could look it up, it's on, it's on the Tonight Show, uh, not the Tonight Show, it's on the Daily Show, John Stewart interviewed him, and he said that he never liked Star Trek because it was too smart for him, so he had to make it, had to take it down to his level, and that's why we got those movies. Yeah. But. The last one was good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I liked the last one. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's, one. it's still, it's still not anywhere near like any of the original series stuff. No. I don't think. But. Yeah, and John. I was really confused by that guy being in Wonder Woman. I was like, is that oh, Star Trek? Uh, oh no, it's not Star Trek. Yeah, his it's um. Wonder Woman. No, he's a. That's how. That's the original story of Wonder Woman. Is uh, this marine guy like, act, like crash lands is on the, World War One? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, he like crash lands on the mascara, and she like meets him like that, and that's her connection to the outside world. Right. Because she lives on this island that's Beautiful. all women. Yeah. And like, she's never as. She doesn't know anything about this other world, and she meets this guy, and he takes her to the other world. She finds out that there's all this war and stuff like that, and right. she decides to defend the Earth and all that is where her origin story comes from. Sure. 
And I hope that I really hope that movie's good. To go off into <laughs> yeah. Wonder Woman right at the end, but we didn't. Yeah. I really, I really hope that's good because DC yeah, movies they've been certain. striking out every time, but they gotta have a good one in there somewhere, and that's like the next one. So well, I hope it's God, Wonder I hope Wonder it's Wonder, good. But I don't, I'm not yeah, sold. but yeah. See, uh, see Rogue One. It's a uh, it's great, it's great Rogue movie. One. We we really liked it a lot, and uh, can't wait to see it again. Um, I'm glad that I'm glad that uh, that Jen or so made those seven figures. She uh, apparently she fought really hard to be the highest paid actor on the set, and she got it. Good for her. From what I heard, she threw her uh, Oscar ness around. Which hey, more power to you. He won an Oscar. Fucking make him pay for it, you know. Well, and she's the fucking <laughs> leader of that fucking movie. Yeah, and her so pay her for it. I was at Target earlier, and I was looking at just looking at the toys as I walked past them, and her face is on everything. Does she get a piece of all that? I don't know. I, I mean, so, it's, she should. But I mean, it's they've they've gone away from making the mistake of like because they didn't make any Ray toys or yeah. didn't make enough of them or something. Everybody's like, where's where's the Ray toys on the last one? And now her face is on like every piece of merchandise of Rogue One. It's like her face is right there. Well, so. I'd love to have a little toy of her dressed yeah. up in her uh, yeah her black. Uh, Stormtrooper yeah. suit. Yeah, she was great. Uh, we enjoyed it. Yeah, I liked when she had the little helmet and you yeah, can just see her eyes eyeballs. through there. She was, it was, so it was cute. cute. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, uh, that wraps up our Star Wars one. Uh, we had to win a little long, but whatever. Um, you know, Merry Christmas to everyone. Merry Happy Christmas. holidays and all that. You probably won't hear from us in the end of the, in the end, of, anymore in the end of this year because there's not too many weeks left and yeah. all that. But we'll come back next year and talk about some other stuff, I'm sure. So. We'll see you then. You know, send us an email, uh, rate us on iTunes, comment on our Facebook, do all that stuff. Honey, 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 darling show. If you just uh, research the honey, darling show on Google, you'll find all this stuff will show up. We're on YouTube also, YouTube slash Mater. So give it a go. Anyway, uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, I, we've been your hosts. I'm Trey Johnson. I'm Jess Canyon. And, uh, we're out. Out.